Hey, I'm Noel, I'm a psychotherapist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, do subscribe while you're here. If you're watching this on my website, enter your details in the blue link above the um, email form list. Um, and I'll send these um, vlogs, these videos to you on a regular basis. Short video this morning about um, being happy and living without drama in your life. It's all possible. Um, drama is very addictive. What do I mean by drama? I'm not talking about sort of watching a soap opera on television. Uh, it's interesting how those types of um, things on um, in media and in popular entertainment are, are so gripping for us. We can sort of vicariously live out the addictive quality of drama through that. In, in reality, though, in our interpersonal lives, um, getting caught up in drama is very, very destructive. It creates a lot of stress hormones within yourself and other people. Um, so um, it's more likely to get you acting out in ways that are unhealthy, using drink or drugs or food to sort of self-medicate some of the difficult feelings. Um, and also get you behaving in ways that um, you then become ashamed of yourself as you try to repair sort of situations that are essentially irreparable. Um, so how can you avoid drama? How can you get happy? I think avoiding drama, not stepping into it, not creating it yourself and being happy. Um, so avoiding drama, being happy are uh, synonyms, really. They're sort of almost the same thing. Um, drama creates so much unhappiness. So here's a few thoughts about that. First of all, check that you're not the source of the drama. So uh, are you listening to rumours about people and are you buying into those rumours? Um, uh, don't do that. It's pretty simple. You know, if somebody's um, inviting you into a conversation which is um, talking about somebody else and you weren't there, part of the situation, my advice, step out of the conversation with that person. Um, don't buy into it. Um, even listening to those conversations sometimes makes it seem like you're um, accepting that person's point of view. So if you can <clears throat> gently and kindly and politely excuse yourself from the conversation, that's fine. If the person doesn't get the message and they send you texts and stuff like that, you, you may need to be more assertive in, in setting a boundary and explaining to the person that you don't engage in gossip. That you're not really interested in that um, and I suggest you do that fairly rigorously really so avoid that grapevine um, avoid the gossip um, making no assumptions uh, about people places or things you know just getting the facts straight um, if you don't know the facts of the situation then you don't know that's it if you then go on to make up a story about it that's all it is it's a story that you're making up in your head um, so if you don't know the facts then that's it. Step away until you do know the facts. Um, and if you don't want to know the facts, then don't get involved. It's that simple. Um, in terms of communication strategies and styles, it's best to be direct to people. If you think there's a problem, just go up to them and say, is there a problem? Um, this is my perspective. What's your perspective? Um, the only caveat on this is that if you're dealing with somebody who's a generator of drama, um, what we call a drama queen, um, or some people call a drama queen, um, sort of a toxic type situation, somebody who actually doesn't want to hear your perspective or has a, an emotional attachment to creating chaos around them because that's how they live. Um, actually, direct communication is going to fail and um, they will manipulate you into strong emotional responses and then use those strong emotional responses to get their fix. Um, essentially, they're an addict around this sort of stuff. Um, in that sort of situation, if you can identify those types of people, the, the sort of addicts in drama and the narcissists and the manipulators and controllers, the people who generate strong emotional uh, responses around them, love or hate, you know, they're quite extreme. People are quite extreme in their relationships to them. Um, those types of people, then my advice is have no communication whatsoever, to be honest. Just step out of that situation. Um, you're wasting your time really trying to be direct and open with somebody um, who's in that sort of um, situation in their life. Um, and like I say, the, the way they thrive is to create strong feelings uh, in the people around them and then they manipulate those feelings. They may not be doing that consciously, but it's what's happening. Um, in situations where drama's happening between you and somebody else, where something has happened, um, you know, uh, I think if you step into being the bigger person, you're going to be better off in the long run. Um, just forgive. 
forgive and forget, move on. Accept that everybody's fragile, everybody's vulnerable, everybody has their own problems. Accept that the person that you feel aggrieved towards, that you want to step into and fight fire with fire or have an eye for an eye with, is just another human being struggling with their own demons like yourself. Um, just accept that about them. Step away from that and step into your higher functioning. Um, I'm talking neurologically here. If you if you go and fight fire with fire or something like that, you have one of those defensive strategies. You're stepping into your sort of fear mechanisms within a part of your brain called the amygdala where you're perceiving this person as a threat. You can decide to not perceive them as a threat and you can step into a more loving and kind relationship in your head to them. You may have to detach from them physically in the world. You may have to have some separation. But detach from the drama, you know, detach from the reaction, the response in that sense. Um, and then have some loving and peaceful thoughts in your head about the person. It's remarkable when you start to do that sort of stuff, how much you can move on from situations um, and not be dragged into, uh, hooked into, we call it, um, a tip for tat situation in which you end up uh, with very strong and negative feelings about somebody unnecessarily. Um, and it's a good tool to, to um, sort of practice in general. I mean, if you're living with somebody who has addiction issues or drama issues and so on, these detachment um, strategies are, are really useful. Detaching with love is what we think about. Um, and that's what I mean by it, is don't engage in being hooked into reactions. Uh, but in your head, step into a much more loving attitude towards a person. That does actually allow you to be free from the situation emotionally and just focus on your life and your goals. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, the video was sort of done, uh, this video was done in response to a request from one of my followers on my Facebook page um, who wanted to know about the types of strategies that um, toxic people in your life will use. Um, my, my suggestion is as much as possible, step away from those people who are manipulators, controllers, those people who generate strong emotional reactions in you, um, other than loving reactions, of course. Uh, as much as possible, don't engage with that type of person and step back. Uh, essentially, a manipulator is trying to generate strong feelings around them, and then will manipulate and uh, use those strong feelings um, to their own ends, um, often in a very sort of self-satisfied, self-justification type of way. You're never going to get an apology from that type of person, don't bother, um, until they reach a point in their life where they decide that something, uh, they've done something wrong. It's a waste of your breath to try and convince them that they've done something wrong. So detach, get into a loving attitude in your head. Um, check that you're not the source of the drama yourself, so you're not undermining your own position in life. Hope that's useful. Hope to see you again another time. Thanks for dropping by this morning. Bye-bye.